Watch the entire video my lovely viewers, I mean from start to finish, to get the whole thing. Without wasting much of your time, let's get right into it. Hi lovely viewers, it's me again, your one and only Mtati Mpundu. Welcome to my YouTube channel. If this is your first time on my channel, kindly subscribe to my YouTube channel by hitting the red subscribe button down below and turn the bell icon to join the notification squad. Don't forget to like, share and leave a comment. Tell me what you think about this video in the comment section below. I'll be super glad to hear from you lovely viewers. This headquarters this morning. Are you able to disclose why you are someone and what you take? What, what's your take on, 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 on the someone that was uh, availed to you? Uh, my lawyers received the, the call out uh, that say uh, Chikumu Band and the uh, associates that uh, they wanted us at the police. The genesis of this is that about three months ago we got a uh, call out to go to the police. At the time I was hospitalized in the university teaching hospital and the doctors at the hospital did inform the police because the police refused to accept that I was actually sick. My lawyers gave them the sick notes. Uh, they were told that they needed to present me before them. And uh, they, they, despite the fact that the lawyers had given them the sick notes, that same day they authored another call out. I basically had about three call outs in one day and uh, they were informed that I was actually admitted in UTH. Five officers came to the University Teaching Hospital and the doctor was compelled to handwrite a note to confirm despite the official sick notes stamped by the University Teaching Hospital. The doctor was compelled by the police to write a handwritten sick note and explain to the police that I was actually in the ward. They actually came into the hospital with my lawyer. So there were five, and uh, plus my lawyer six. And the doctor says, my, my patient is here, and uh, it's not possible for her to come to the police now. So that passed, I went for treatment out of the country. I've come back, hardly about 10 days, and my lawyer has got a call out. So he told me that, look, let's go you hear what the charges are because this is persistent it could be anything let's go so we went today as obedient citizens and uh, we were interviewed by a team of uh, three officers i think an assistant commissioner inspector of police and uh, an inspector and uh, they read the charge the charge is that um, I, Edith Nawakwe, on dates unknown, between September 2020 and January 2021, I did threaten violence contrary to the Penal Code Section 90 and abducted Feruna Hatembo and lodged them in different hotels and guest houses against their will, which traumatized them and now they filed a complaint of threatening violence and abduction before the police. So naturally, this is a complaint from citizens and the police must follow through with the instructions of investigation. So I was warned and cautioned. They asked me if I had anything to say. I have advised them that at the present moment, I have nothing to say. Unless they opt before, they opt to go to court. Then I will have mountains to say. Because uh, the genesis of this Feluna story is in the public domain. The players are known. The beneficiaries of, uh, of uh, the Kalomo land is none other than the president himself. So he knows what he did. And uh, I would have no interest at the moment to provide any further details until I face my accusers in a court of law. So that's what happened today. 
uh, we, we concluded and left. Now, the, 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 the case itself is against the one and person which was done to the crime beneficiary of the president and the matter did not take off. So, how does it turn before the other one is concluded, another one is such a thing of things that have some facts? Actually, you may recall that uh, 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 how I came into the picture was because of the issues of Lima Bank. I went to Kalomo to look for properties which were in private hands, which were Lima Bank properties. And that's how I get in touch with it. The felunas, I was preparing my defense case of Edith Nawaku defends the Haka in the Ichilema. And I was preparing it and it was well prepared. In fact, if the journalists take their time and go to the High Court, our affidavit was watertight. We were really looking forward to see Haka in the Ichilema prosecuting his case of defamation by Edith Nawaku. Because then we would have asked him pertinent questions. Now he's head of state, so he opted in that case that uh, he was not going ahead because the law doesn't allow him to prosecute private citizens. But in between that, I have had threats from Margareta, who wrote to, to me and said that I should respond within seven days that I defamed him when I said, and I caught, that the last persons to be in custody of the felunas were UPND themselves. They threatened to take this matter to court, it lapsed. Then they wrote another one, their lawyer uh, just came and threw a document outside in the rain, I didn't pick it up, and I've been waiting for them to go to court. Because look, everyone has a right in court to defend and put their case first. So I've been harassed and harassed by their members on the press, by these people who think in their compensation scheme, some people were not included. And uh, if you recall, the question here is, there were a lot of people, there were NGOs who were running around in circles with them in hotels, in, in different places in the bush. Now they say that even as though they were in Kaloma and Choma in the bush doing those videos with Vitukule, Nicholas Peer and them, I was still threatening them but they were in the custard of other people. So I mean, I, I, I'm saying that look, this is no time for giving them chance to to think that uh, they can run away. I'm actually elated that even though the president dropped his case on defamation, he has opted indirectly through Feluna and Milton to be in court. So we will meet each other in court and uh, I hope that they have their defense. You, you see, the, the, there was a time when I was accused of uh, defaming a, a president and I said we meet in court we went to court they dropped I hope this time they are not going to be talking of what what do they call it and, uh, when you are uh, accused put on defense they come back and say no we are not proceeding no no less. the knowledge I don't want a knowledge let the police take this matter to the uh, DPP proceed I don't want a nole. If you are going to put a nole, don't even start. Because it won't work. But what's your general feeling? Is it because of the statements you've been making to the media that they want now to follow up on this case? And Precisely. Haka in the Ichilema is such a person whose ego is larger than Zambia. And he thinks that he can shut everyone up. Because look, I mean... <laughs> Just face it, he can't manage this country. He's incompetent, he has no skill, he has no acumen of being a head of state. Nothing. Because his preoccupation is which next politician is going to inconvenience. This, this, some of these cases, 
they have the power, they can arrest me, they can lock me up. It only serves as an inconvenience. To convict is another issue because the conviction is on the basis of facts. And uh, the only reason that the Haka in the Ichirema is behind this hoax is that he, he's just scared of his shadow. And uh, this is the nature of men who are not fulfilled in life. He thinks that uh, being president is the best thing and all of us must shut up and start clapping for him and say, ah, no, some of us can't. Some of us can't. He comes in from Uwengwa. He was brought up in a village. He needs to understand that his duty is to the village, to the people on the street, to the hunger that is uh, befallen this country and presented the suffering. That's his duty. He has a golden duty given to him by God to serve the people of Zambia, not to continue harassing innocent people. I've just come back from treatment. I need to rest, I need to recuperate. And for, for him it doesn't matter, he would ask, when I was on treatment they were posting, they were posting that they want me dead. <laughs> Luckily God doesn't take out people like that. So, uh, it's the statements that I've been making. How can I be making statements? I must shut up. People must die of hunger. Who is going to speak for the people of Zambia? Who is going to speak for the people of Zambia? And I want to say, listen, Zambians, get up. Let's start a movement to get Haka in the out of office. And that movement should be very serious. It requires a sacrifice. It requires dedication. It requires a service to the nation. This president has reintroduced the colonialism. When in 59 years did you ever think that State House would be populated by foreigners? We just foreigners in the First Republic. Now him, he's much more secure being guarded by a foreign national than his own citizen. Security in the people is in the people of Zambia. And there are many leaders in the world who will confirm that Security is not about guns and what. Security is about the stomach. Security is about food. Food, defense, and medicine, that's what constitutes security. The fourth angle in that realm is that the people must be happy. But this is the present where you go to the market, you go to the river, you go to the field. Everyone says, ah, tatinkanawa haka indi. Kalema nao. He must go. He's fake. And I agree with him. I'm just reporting. Do you hope to see the president? For what? Law? For what? For what? I have no I have no time on my agenda to see him. If he is a, a president who says today I'm going to Kanakantapa to talk to women on how to grow soya, I would be running after him. If today he says this afternoon, for me you've been complaining about uh, UTHCD. A cancer disease hospital, there's no medication. I'd be running after him. Uh, do you know that in this country, at this hour, there's no functioning CT scan in the hospital? Not one. People are queuing up at the at, uh, minor sofa. People are dying on the cruise. There's no medicine. So, well, see him for what? He doesn't inspire any following. He doesn't... Uh, I mean, look, a president whose people are hungry, he says, no, umutengo wala, wala, study juicy, just keep quiet. I think it's a tragedy. And Zambians must understand that uh, voting for Haka Inde is Zambia's worst mistake that they did. Because this president will not take us anyway. No. <laughs> Okay. Coming back to, to the charge where it have been warned and cautioned, the law requires that uh, the first complaint be exhausted. Now, the first complaint of abduction, which was made against the, the president by the Peruna, has not been concluded. No, in fact, it wasn't a complaint or an abduction against the president. Mm -hmm. The Felunas' arrival in town 
was a, a complaint about the fraudulent acquisition of farm 1724 in Kalomo, which did belong to the late Hatembo, the father to Feluna, and that Feluna was in fact the administrator. And she argued at the time, and it's on court record, that she had never met Hakainde, she had never signed any contract with Hakainde. That was a complaint. So, uh, the next complaint was about missing persons. Her daughters went to police headquarters and filed a complaint of missing persons. We've never been informed by the police about where they went and what they, they were doing. The third complaint was uh, another complaint of missing persons by Feluna's brothers. They went to central police and found people were looking for them. I personally went to police headquarters and saw the then head of CID investigation, Mr. Kataka. Mr. Kataka he, he was not fired, but the whole department that was following this case was dismissed. They are among those uh, uh, many police officers who were dismissed. Uh, they, they, they are, you see, their argument was that these were the people who, were, who wanted the Hakainde to be arrested. You understand that? Mm -hmm. So, uh, there were complaints of missing persons. I was never in the picture. Save the UPND was saying that I'm the one who was forcing Feluna to file a complaint of fraud against the then leader of UPND. That was what was there. And uh, when they were running around with Zitukul and them, I went to the police. I said, look, relatives are looking for these people. If you have any information, which these people are saying that I'm threatening them, please, I'm here, because the family is in distress. Feluna left a very, very ill child, and left a lot of things unattended to. And uh, that was my preoccupation. How do you manage a child when the mother is nowhere to be seen? The daughters were saying, we don't know where mommy is. And uh, I, I, there were no answers. So we saw the police arresting some people and what not. Now, where you are sitting, there's a joke in the village where you sit and you move on. Then you have to accept that. Indeed, you are the youngest. So, Kalendi Akaticho Chise. Uh, I think what, uh, what UPND and the real leader want to do, they think that they can wash their debt on me. And uh, that's what I'm, I'm saying, look, uh, the best is to conclude these matters in court. I've always dared them to say, let's go to court. Someone who wants to talk about, now oh, they are following the correct procedures. They have inspired the Milton and the sister to complain. And the police are entitled to investigate. They are only doing a public job. They are public servants. Me, I always have nothing against the police. That's why when they call, I respect their cause. I've always shown up at the police when they call me. Because I recognize one thing. They are only doing a national duty to inquire. Because tomorrow I'll be the one to go there and complain. And we need to give the police the room to investigate, prepare the dockets and hand them over to the DPP. So... That's the status of things. It was Feluna complaining about the fraudulent acquisition of a farm by Haka in the HDM in Kalomo. And her argument was that she never signed the assignment document. And uh, those were the issues that the police were following. Issues of fraud. Alleged fraud. May I correct that? <laughs> no. Okay. Before they could conclude the issue of missing person, which was filed in court, then the same, pe the same people that he alleged the relatives uh, were missing turned around to... No, in fact, it's the missing persons who are the complainant. From my own understanding, uh, it's the missing persons who have complained. That they were abducted, they were threatened, and they had... Uh, come to Lusaka to seek help from me. In that attempt, I ended up with threatening violence to them and abducting them. What do you make of the uh, summonings and uh, the various ar arrests of um, opposition leaders in the country? 
I've already said that Hakainde feels that he's entitled to be the only living leader in this country. But that is undoing. Uh, you know, when God wants you revealed, they will make you have these strange traits of intolerance, inability to sit down with people. Because who is a leader? A simple definition of a leader is someone who can lead. And what is leading? It's a simple sitting down to discuss what are we going to eat? How are our children going to go to school? How are we going to manage this agricultural season? That's the art of a leader. The Nehemiah in the Bible. Where you find a broken wall and say, he come together, let us rebuild the, the, the wall around Jerusalem. You can do it if you have the will, the correct people, the desire to save, and the genuine, genuine belief that you are in that office because God has placed you there to save his people. But if you don't have a, the belief that a, you are there to save but you are there for yourself, then you become a tin pot dictator. You become a emperor Bokas. You become the almighty. And when you come to that point, the country is lost. My only worry now as a, one of the leaders is that uh, the hunger is a time bomb. Hunger in any nation is a time bomb. You see, Zambians are always happy when they can have the Anshima. Don't uh, tell them that, no, go and eat masuku, go and eat pumpkins. Zambians don't like that. We love our Anshima. If we can have our Anshima, we won't do it at the correct price. No one will tire their anxiety. But my worry right now is that uh, President Akainde Ichirema is tiring the anxiety in our people. And uh, that's my major worry and I'm, I'm praying that it should come to pass. I was hoping that this year the government can put good measures in place so that by next year people are able to calm down their anxiety about how they're going to survive. Because if you have food, you can sell, you can look after your family. And that's, that's, the, that's the art of a leader. You must lead, you must provide, you must motivate your people. You know, I see young people in town, I see youths in town. They walk around, some pushing wheelbarrows, some literally wondering where they are going to sleep. And I say to myself, our president has lost an opportunity to motivate his age group. Can you imagine Bali in town and saying to the young people, look, we don't have money as a nation, but let's do this. He would mobilize the whole country just by a simple push. But he's busy flying, today he's in Israel, my Rovali could do Bali. He is much more comfortable with uh, some of us. He's not comfortable with his own children and young brothers and sisters on the street. And, and for me, that gives me pain. Because this is our age group. He left us in awe. He has left us wondering what we did to God to deserve him as our leader. So it's a big, a, big, a big challenge, but uh, Zambians are patient. And I believe in the spirit of a Zambian to work hard. Zambians don't want to beg. Zambians want to be facilitated to work for themselves. And this government, this president, is incapable of mobilizing productive power from the people of Zambia. Thank you very much, man. All right, that's all right for you today, lovely viewers. If you did enjoy the video, please don't forget to leave a comment in the comment section below. Tell me what you think about the video you just watched in the comment section below. I'll be super glad to hear from you, lovely viewers. Once again, I go by the name of Mutatim Pondum. I love you. Peace. I gotta go.